Well, you may not have heard of eCal just yet, but you will have heard of some of their clients, including the Boston Celtics, Chicago Bears, and other big name sporting teams. The marketing platform scored a big, big win at this year's The Big Pitch event, and now it secured a $2 million funding agreement with Oxygen Ventures. Well, eCal CEO Patrick Barrett joins me now in studio. Um, the Big Pitch, just, just very quickly, what was it? Yeah, the Big Pitch was a, a national pitch competition organised by Oxygen Ventures, which is obviously uh, headed and run by Larry Kesselman mm. of Dodo fame. And uh, there was a big carrot uh, involved for the Big Pitch, and that was up to $5 million of, of funding. ECAL won. Why? What, what, what is ECAL? Uh, ECAL, I think, ticks a lot of the boxes that they were looking for. It's a big idea. It has massive market potential. Um, and we've gained some serious traction. Um, we're solving some critical problems, a number of critical problems from a marketer's perspective. Um, and if we run through those, I mean, the first problem that we solve really is there is no really easy way to create and manage events-related content. Mm. Uh, normally it's done via Excel spreadsheets, they're sent around the office, and there's a time lag there that, um, that makes things pretty uh, hard to manage internally. Um, the second problem that we solve is that um, the communications world is, is so fragmented and it's continually to be fragmented. Um, a modern marketer now needs to keep their website up to date, um, you know, their, their SMS, their mobiles, their Facebook, their Twitters, their LinkedIn's, etc. Um, ECAL allows them to actually streamline the publishing process and update their content on all of these channels. The biggest and most compelling part of what eCal does is actually provide a direct connection for marketers into the personal calendar space of their consumers. How? So we were talking about this yep. just early in the break. How does that work? So it works by a number of widgets and applications across um, the websites and across mobile sites, mobile apps and Facebook that allow the consumer to choose their content, mm -hmm. to choose their um, preferred personal calendar, be that on smartphone, desktop calendar or even social networks like Facebook, and they actually subscribe. Um, that will launch their personal um, calendar program and a calendar subscription will be generated in that um, and therefore the marketer c can communicate and send information and content, rich content, directly, directly, into, the, to directly the into the calendar space, bypassing the inbox. Now this is quite a seismic shift if you like it, in terms of the way that previous marketing within the space w was done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this really is the last daily communication channel that has been um, you know, up till now untapped mm. from a marketer's perspective. I mean, in the end, a marketer and an advertiser, you know, they want to gain the time and attention of the consumer. Yeah. Um, ECAL allows them to literally capture time and attention. Um, and really what they're able to do is deliver on time and in time communications so um, they can deliver messaging when it's most relevant and, and that's key along with all the additional and relevant information around that event um, and also quick links to purchase and engage um, but it's worth reminding as well and crucially that it's the consumer that has a say over who actually markets to them it's, it's an opt-in if you like yeah absolutely so you choose your profile on subscription um, so you know, the marketer has full knowledge of what information that you agree mm. to be sent and to be populated into your calendar. Um, you also have the ability to opt in for further marketing communications and advertising and interestingly the marketing opt-in opt rate on our software is 90 to 95 percent. It's is that incredibly right? high. Were you surprised? Uh, I am to a degree. Um, but I think it's also good kudos on, on the software yeah. um, in that it's a trusted platform it works, it's of high value, um, and also the trusting of the clients. I mean, this is a software that lives on the client site. Um, they're passionate fans, um, and they want to know about the information they've, you know, they've opted in for. Um, so from that respect, um, I understand uh, why the opt-in rates are so good. What's the, what's the, 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 the ultimate goal for eCal? I mean, What's the what's the big the big plan? Yeah, I mean, you know, as you say and as you mentioned, this is a this is a really new and exciting yeah. segment, and um, you know I think it's our role as you know the innovator in this segment that probably has a, a jump on the competition in terms of what we're doing. Uh, it's a market that we created. Um, it's a market that I want to continue to expand and develop because it has uh, limitless possibilities 
you know, at the moment we, we work in a core market of sports, entertainment, media, lifestyle, but wouldn't it be nice to actually receive a calendar reminder about an upcoming bank payment or loan payment rather than getting a telephone call when you're a few days late on your payment schedule? Um, so, they're, so reaching into other vertical markets is important for us. Um, and they're you know, large, expansive mm. um, vertical markets such as banking and finance, um, retail, education is an obvious play. Uh, and health uh, is another one as well. Just more broadly, obviously you're in, in growth now, but started as a startup, as I suppose mm -hmm. just about every business does. Um, what was the support like when you were when you were looking for funding, when you were looking to get you know, an idea, and again, it's something an idea that wasn't already in practice, yeah. you know, getting it up and going. Um, it's difficult. It's difficult, and, and um, it's difficult in a startup environment to know who to trust as well. Um, you know, there are a lot of venture firms that, that um, you know, claim to have funds that are not necessarily spending. You don't really find out. Um, so it's important to do your homework on, I think, others. Um, mm. But in the same sense, it's a balancing act because you desperately need the funds and you've, you've built an opportunity in the market and you want to capitalise on it. Um, certainly my dealings with Oxygen Ventures, who I think bring a new perspective to the market and it's so refreshing and, and, and this is why that I entered the, the pitch competition because normally I wouldn't. Um, and you know, their model really is about providing not only the cash, but a shared services model that you've got instant access to. Um, so what I've realised since being with Oxygen Ventures is that I have instant access to any number of you know, highly qualified resources at my fingertips. Um, and you know, there's no obligation to use those, but mm. they're there. That's right. And so if I need a developer, UX designers, marketing, finance, PR, um, they're all there uh, and I can utilise those. So, um, so that's been really pleasing. Brilliant stuff. Mm. Patrick, great to talk. Thanks very much. Thanks, James. We're going to head to another quick break here on Switzer coming up. Increased regulation. How will it impact a bank's bottom line and how can they prepare for it? Stay with us.